Have you wanted to make a game, but you just couldn't code? Like, honestly, you know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Actually, no, there is a lot to be ashamed of in that. But let's just pretend that there isn't. When I was around 10 or like 11, I think, I really wanted to try and make my own game. Obviously, you know, that dream came with the perception that this would be easy. So I installed Unity and I just, you know, was like, oh, how do I make a game? And I kept following the tutorials, but then every single time I just get stuck and I would just stop. And I never really understood what was going on. And game development just felt like a thing that was too far for me, right? Until I was like, 13 and I hopped onto Unity again and I'm like, wait a second, I need to code. I just, I didn't know that this was a thing, right? And so, you know, the idea that I had to code made the idea of game development a lot harder. And so I just stopped for a while, came back to Roblox Studio, decided to learn coding again. And, you know, I think I somewhat made it. But now I'm wondering, right, having used Roblox Studio for such a long time and basically just maining Studio, right? I don't, I don't use Unity. I don't use Unreal Engine. I don't use a uh, Godot, Godot. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. Basically, I only use Studio. And Studio has a lot of items in it. It has things like drag detectors, click detectors, images, right? Uh, user interface, which actually I guess is kind of useless without code. Point is, it does have a lot of items that have built-in functionalities that don't actually technically require you to code them in. And so that's really my question, right? How good of a game could we make without writing a single line of code once? So the rules are, we can add items, right? We can change the properties of the items. Uh, we're just not allowed to have scripts uh, in any way, right? So there's like many types of scripts. There's script, local script, module script, we can't have any of that. All we can do is just add or change items. So let's get right into it, right? Step number one, drag detectors, right? I just talked about them. The reason I bring these up is because these are actually insanely useful for just being an item, right? Because here's the thing, a lot of the other items that like allow you to do some sort of like physics manipulation, they do require you to script them in, right? They, which kind of sucks. The beauty of a drag detector so is that, let me show you, right? If I, let's say, make a sphere like so, and then I add the drag detector inside of the sphere, and then and let, let's just make the sphere purple, okay? And then let's make it glass. I think that would look pretty nice. So now if I go and play the game, right? I can roll it around. How cool is that? I can like, yeah, move it up here and then I can like drag it over there. And then yeah, now it's now it's gone, sadly. And I can change how this drag detector actually works. So for example, I can change the max activation distance to be basically infinity, right? Like so. I can also change the drag style, right? So I know that, you know, this probably doesn't make any sense, but it basically just changes the way that the drag works, right? So in this case, um, yeah, look, it just rotates it, but it doesn't doesn't actually move it. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff here. Or like, I don't know, translate line, right? What does translate line does? What does it do? Who knows? Which is cool because it actually like kind of follows the line that you're going, which I know doesn't make much sense, but like, look at this, right? Now, instead of following the plane, it goes up, right? How cool is that? Oh man. Yeah, so already we have a nice little almost feature, you could say, without actually scripting any of it. And really the only other things that we actually have to like, you know, change without script are these things called constraints, right? Basically constraints are like things where you can connect one part to another through some sort of physics, like maybe a rope constraint or just a weld where it just completely welds them together, right? And so right now I'm thinking, right, how could we use this? Like maybe let's say if I make a rope constraint, right? And then I have this part, right? And just let's say I duplicate this part and then, you know, make another one. Could I make a rope constraint from this part to this part? Now, rope constraints need this thing called attachments, which are very easy to add, just like so. And yeah, if I could just give it attachment zero and attachment one, uh, now we have a nice looking rope. And I guess I'll also change the drag detector to be um, translate plane, as it is by default instead of like whatever I was doing. And yeah, so if I do it like this, right, and I start dragging this thing around, look at that. Yeah, now, now it's connected to this thing with a rope. So right now, just knowing the fact that we don't actually have basically anything to work with does make me a little upset, right? Scripts obviously do add a lot of cool features. I say scripts help. I mean, they help a lot. For example, I was I was considering like while making the video, I was, I was thinking like, oh yeah, I could maybe use a rope constraint to attach it to my character. But the problem is my character right now doesn't exist here. So how do I play the game and have it automatically attached to my character? I can't make it attached to my character without a script, right? So I can't even attach anything to my character because my character doesn't exist yet. So all of this is stupid. And so we're back to step one with the drag detector, basically not knowing exactly what to do. But here's the thing, right? None of this is lost quite yet. If I make a wall like this, right? And let me just make it this tall, like so, and then I'll set it set anchored to be true so it doesn't just fall over. Now, initially, I was thinking to maybe make like a cool system where like you can take the ball and then you can like, you know, roll it around like a, a wall or something. And then maybe we could like make a maze here where you have to like, you know, roll the ball through. The issue here though is that when you try to roll a ball up a wall, it doesn't want to. 
it just doesn't and if i let go it just, it just goes away try to obviously i bring it back instantly this is my ball right but like it doesn't work so very quickly running out of options i've decided to try out my final last id all right so really quickly what i just did is to make this abomination okay it looks like a rib cage it looks very weird but all of this is inside of one model and this is where we get to my final idea and we use this thing that is in roblox by default that doesn't need scripting called a collision group so the beauty of collisions is that you can select which parts can collide with what parts so let's say for example i want to have a part that is purple and then the ball can fall through the purple part but then like what if i don't want the player to fall through the purple part i only want the ball to do that how can i do that well i can do that by basically making a collision group which i can call whatever i want which i'll just call purple and in here it shows us what purple can collide with which we're gonna unselect purple so anything with a collision group set to purple will not be able to collide with other parts that are also set to purple and so do you see where i'm going with this right i'll take this ball i'll find its collision group there we go and i'll set this collision group to be purple and so really here all i have to do is i just need to make a bunch of parts that are meant to be purple so what i can do is i can take this part right i can duplicate this part i can name it to be purple and i can also set it to be purple like so and then after closing down the holes i just need to take all of these parts that we called purple and you probably guessed it set their collision group to be purple and so now let's say i take this model and i just put it up high in the air okay if i were to now play the game right and take this ball what happens is that if i roll it over this purple thing look at that it falls down okay so we're currently being faced with a very big problem which is that while i'm holding the ball it doesn't actually fall now when i release it there we go it falls right so look at that it's all the way down there now obviously this is a problem because then the player could just keep holding the ball and win so as a final thing what i'm going to do is I'll basically make a new part, okay? Which I actually believe this will make the game, you know, that we're making a lot better. So what I'll do is I'll make this part finally, and I'll make it, let's say red. And this is the part, okay? That's gonna have the drag detector. And as you can probably tell, the goal of this game now isn't to actually drag the ball, it's to drag this part and make it push the ball. And honestly, I feel like this will make it a lot more of a challenge. Yeah, and so now what's gonna happen is that I can't actually let the ball go here. Now, this one can go here because obviously it's not of the purple color group, but the ball can still fall through, right? Look at that. And I genuinely think that we've just completed our game. This is a full game made with absolutely zero code. You know, that maybe required some Roblox Studio scripting knowledge, but it actually requires skill. Like, it's not some, like, dumb game, you know, quote-unquote, that actually isn't fun. Like, I actually could see myself playing this. Oh, no, 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 no. I really wonder if I could be this i mean obviously i can you know it's just gonna take time and blah 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 i mean like obviously i, I should be able to because i all, i think all, all this game really takes is just time but i think the fact that this red thing isn't actually affected by the purple things is very convenient this game is made a lot easier by, by the fact that like this red thing can't actually fall down no 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 no! please 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 i'm actually try harding in my own game bro i'm not gonna bother finishing the game because look I, I could do it okay i could do it it just would take time but yeah as you know unremarkable as this looks we actually just made a fun challenging and quite easy to make game with absolutely zero lines of code and i guess we could finish the game off by adding some sort of user interface okay so i can add a billboard gui above this ball and you see like this square over here that's the billboard GUI. So what I could do is inside of this, I could just add a text label. And okay, after some adjusting, there we go. Now we have text that says roll the ball. And we have this puck that's obviously meant to be rolled. And then, you know, we have this nice looking puck, which actually I'm just thinking right now, we could just make it a cylinder. Yeah, there we go. So instead of roll the ball, I guess we could say like puck the ball. Is that is that a thing? Okay, you know what? It's whatever. Yeah, I just rolled the ball. We have our puck, right? And again, just to ensure that everything works. Yeah, the text follows the ball. And yeah, this is literally our finished product with, n by the way, no toolbox, right? All of the assets that we used are just built in Roblox stuff without using any anyone else's assets. And with all of this said, let's actually try the game out. And yeah, look at this. Zero lines of code. All of this is done with default Roblox. I look at that. The text has a shadow on it yeah so i know this game doesn't look the most professional but oh there we go the ball just fell we, we failed the game guys but honestly we just made a game that's not only fun but also just easy to make right anyone could have made this you you could have opened up roblox studio right now followed what i'm doing fully understood you know most of it and have just made your own fun game 
And I can't even imagine how much you could do when you actually start implementing scripting into games like these. And I say that because if you actually want to develop your own games, like if, you know, you've been planning for a while, or if this video just caught your attention and you're like, you know what, you're considering it. I have a free preview. So like I have a course, right? And you know, usually it costs money, but the course has some videos which are free to preview and actually learn from. And it's like actually free. I'm not going to ask you for like your credit card information or anything like that. So yeah, if you're interested, the link is in the pinned comment and the description. So you can go check that out. You know, if you actually want to try this game out and see if you could, you know, do it by yourself what i'll do is i'll turn this file um into a game and i'm thinking right now multiplayer probably wouldn't work here because like the moment that the ball gets out then that's kind of the end of the game so maybe actually what i could do is i could take this ball right and maybe i could like duplicate it to like have multiple of it like maybe maybe something like this yeah so now it's a server for at least five people which is pretty nice and there you have it a full game with absolutely zero code again to prove it script local script module script nothing no scripts absolutely nothing and i guess a challenge i'll give you is try and make this yourself even if you are really good at scripting try to just open up studio and just see how far you can get without scripting absolutely anything and so as always we are back to basics thank you for watching